Hello, and welcome to Living Proofs All About Texture course we have here today. I'm excited to introduce to you um, our global creative director, Michael Sean Corby, and um, one of our global creative team artist, Eddie Uker from Guatemala. So today it's going to be a mixture of cutting and styling, really feeding into the overall vision of creating texture, regardless of what type of hair your client has. Um, so before we get started, just a couple of Zoom uh, best tips. So make sure you keep yourself on mute. And also um, when you want to enlarge a presenter, there's three little dots on the side of a video. Just click those dots and hit pin and that presenter will be full screen on your device. So you'll be able to get up close and personal. So this is a pretty small class. So feel free to, um, be part of it, ask questions, whether it's from technical or it's about products. Um, this is really all about you. So we're pretty excited to share our program with you today. <laughs> all right, Michael, Sean, take it away. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us today, especially Marisha. I know these are recorded um, and some people will watch it later and some people will buy the class later, but this is your chance to really ask all the questions you want on just about everything we're doing here in our class entitled, sorry, I'm, <laughs> you're like, that's a talking mouth. Um, so let me pin myself so I can see me. Hi. Um, so hopefully you're doing well. Remember to just uh, drop your questions in the chat box or at this point you can um, unmute or show us your face and wave at us if you want to, unless you got rollers in your hair or something. Um, we'd love to see you and talk to you as well. Um, today in the All About Textures class, we are going to celebrate the fact that texture um, is like a fabric. It's not a race, right? So, um, and many textures can be on many different individuals. So we're gonna have smooth textures, bouncy textures, curly textures, wavy textures, even almost to a coily texture that we're gonna play with today. And instead of showing you <clears throat> what I like to call the boring parts of any given cut or style, we're gonna assume you know how to cut a zero in some cases, just the length. We'll tell you, you know, maybe where the length should fall. And then from there, we'll get into the really nitty gritty sort of detailed portions of the cuts, which I think are so fun and enjoyable to do. So, um, and Eddie, welcome Eddie. You wanna say hello a little bit and, and a little bit about what you'll be showing today? Hey guys, how are you? My name is Eddie. I'm so happy to hear to be here with you. Actually, we will be teaching a couple of techniques that you may apply behind the chair, some textures that you would love to play with your clients, but we will also have some, um, let's say, artist inspired, which is something that I love to do here in Latin America. So stay tuned, you'll, you'll enjoy this class. And make sure you follow us on social I've nowhere near as many fans as Eddie. My God, he has like 50 million or 80,000 uh, followers there. Congratulations on that, Eddie. Um, but follow us both, reach out with your questions. We'd love to hear from you and chat more. So I'm gonna do the haircut I call the in-between and I, I'm not talking about um, you know the, the hot show on Netflix, right? Which is amazing. What I'm talking about is really being able to live in between shapes in times like these a lot of people are feeling as though they don't know how, how long their haircut's going to last and they want to come see you but they want to make sure that that hair is going to look good all along so maybe they don't want to go for the maximum shortness because it has all these weird faces i like to say let's start her in that weird face so we're going to start with a haircut today a short haircut and then i'm going to go into a curly cut as far as what I'm teaching. So you're gonna get all cuts from me and all styles from Eddie today. So part of being in between is mixing it up. So I'm gonna start in the front with my haircut today. Quite simply, we've taken the crown ridge out all the way around in the haircut. 
Why we're doing that is just so we have a good 50-50 portion of the hair to work with. We're gonna cut all around the perimeter nice and short, but we're gonna keep it soft as well. In one part, because it's right on trend. In the second part, because I don't know if you've ever cut mannequin hair too short, but she kind of looks like a porcupine. And so I don't wanna teach you porcupine cuts today. Other than that, we've taken out this complete crown and then we've taken another sub triangle. And I like to just take it off center because it takes the eye away from just totally center focus and gives a little point of interest that's a little bit unique and in between for the haircut. So we've got those sectioned out. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a smaller subsection. Also, if, if done correctly, the top of the head kind of looks like a Pac-Man, jumpa, 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 um, to bring back the 80s a little bit. But I think of this bob uh, as being not only the 80s, but sort of the mod kids of that era. So it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna get right into it here. I'm gonna remove these two clips. And what I'm going to do is just take a smaller V section within the V. So it's a V within the V in the in between. And I'm just going to take that out. Sorry if I'm in your way. <clears throat> and what's nice is you can just wrap it around your top knot to take that out of your way. Instead of using water to moisten the hair, I'm going to use our perfecting spray. You might have noticed I accidentally removed a fingertip this morning. Whoops. Um, so I'll try not to be gross. Um, so we've got this little V here and I'm using the perfecting spray because the reason being is if you keep grabbing water behind the chair, the client's going to think water is the magic for everything. Let her know that, you know, the perfecting spray gives it combability, gives it slip, make sure that all your tools are working better and that it's gonna to help to protect her hair from heat styling. Okay, so I'm gonna use scissor for this technique. I cut with the long tail comb because I'm just weird and I like it. I like the way it feels in my hands. So I'm gonna take this and what I'm gonna do is now that we have this smaller section here, I'm gonna just put that a little tighter. My hair's not quite so long. And what I wanna do is I want to cut this section nice and short because we know it's a, a bit shorter haircut. I'm gonna hold this straight out here and then pointing all that down toward her eyebrow. So I'll give you a nice angle here as well, hopefully. Pull it nice and tight, hold it to her hairline. And then you're gonna see this nice lift in through there. We call this axis cutting for shape. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gently putting that in motion, just so it's gradually going from really short toward the face to a little bit longer underneath. Now you might think, oh God, what's that gonna do? That feels a little scary, but you can see as it falls, it's actually not scary at all. It's actually super cute. So cute that I'm just gonna go a little bit shorter and give you another view of that. Facing it down, cutting in a straight up and out direction. Oh, now I'm getting real bold with it. And I'm loving that. I'm loving this sort of semi babyish bang within the section. So now I can drop the other two sides. This is really all about compacted sections completely. So I'm going to comb that into it. We're going to lightly mist with our perfecting spray instead of water. And I'm gonna take this entire section here. And remember, if you have any questions, those watching, just go ahead and shoot those in. Okay, so what you see, bringing that toward the center and then I'm cutting in an upward direction. So we just want these corner sections to be ever so slightly longer than the one in the center. Watch what's really cool as we comb that out we're really starting to get this little shape around the face that feels like we spent like 30 minutes to an hour on her fringe when the truth is it barely takes any time at all. Now it's gonna be really hard to change your hand positions. I know we've all been taught palm to palm as we work around, but it's easier if you just bring that entire V section here. And now we've got both sides as a guide so we can really get in there and then you're gonna see where the length is. 
So just carry it over from the other side. And now we're good to go. We've got shortness in the middle. We've got built in texture. And I can always go in and piece that out a little bit more later if I want to. Okay, so we've got this done. We're gonna save the crown for the very last. And now I'm gonna switch my tool to a razor. And with a razor, you can use a straight razor if you'd like to take off the tip of your finger, or you can use, um, you can use a feather razor with the guard. And you just wanna try and make sure, well, definitely make sure that you put on a brand new blade once or twice per haircut. And you wanna make sure that you're working in a very deliberate downward motion so that you're hitting between the grooves and really right onto the blade. I'm gonna get the hair nice and wet. So I'm gonna use a combination of the perfecting spray and some water, just so we have extra slip on this hair. Oops, okay. And now we've got this little guide in the corner now, don't we? So I'm just gonna take my first section, nice and compacted, pushing everything out of the way. I'm gonna pull that back to that line. Don't cut your fringe because it's super cute, but cut the hair just below it and go ahead and cut in a downward motion and then give it a little push. Now give that first section the push. In the in-between, we want it short, but we don't want it to look like she needs a haircut. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I might take just a little bit more because it's my show and I want to do that, right? So from that same point, and I'm just going to very deliberately pushing between the blades, pushing that down. Okay. So you can see it's starting to really kind of taper around her face. I'm liking this, you know, with artists like Miley Cyrus right now, a lot of supermodels are wearing this kind of like stuck to the face, almost texture, wet looks and so forth. So we've got some possibilities there. Also, we are now going to take another big chunky section and I'm just gonna pull that one and the other section to the middle and here we go. We want that in between bulk, if you will. We want that in between softness and texture. We need more water underneath. So you can see it's really starting to shape in with that deliberate. I don't have to do a lot of tapping with the razor. I'm just really kind of getting that beautiful softness. And when we get to the back, again, super compacted sections here, we're gonna take that, but we realize we've got more hair there, don't we? So I'm just gonna start moving this more on a diagonal. So I'm just gonna push that up and out of my way. If you need to clip it, you can. Up and out of the way, pulling this out. And then same thing, find your guide. This is a traveling guide. And then I'm just pushing all the way down very deliberately, combing it out and seeing what we made. Do we like it? I don't know, do we like it? I would like it just a little bit shorter at the very bottom. I want this long-ish in between this, but not quite a bi-level kind of feeling. So I'm gonna keep taking sections. They're still chunky, but now they're vertical. Right? And what am I doing? I'm seeing that previous guide right there and I'm gonna hold it out from there, straight where it lives. We're not really over directing anywhere, combing that down. Save these little bits for the very end. It's often, I like to finish those out when it's dry so I can really, really see what I've been making but I am gonna make sure I'm continuing this in a vertical fashion so we get that nice blend all the way through. One more section vertically because these are very chunky sections. Combing that down, that's gonna keep a little bounce in my step or her step. Pushing that down, all the way down there, keeping that in between softness as we work around. So you can really see that's starting to take shape Again, I'm not scared of those ends at all. I like them. Okay, so I'm gonna continue through the side here. 
I know a lot of people are sort of afraid of razor cuts. I find that razor works beautifully. If you have a really good um, moisture level in the hair, I'm not a super fan of too much dry work with the razor, but I do think they work exceptionally well if the hair is nice and wet. So I'm gonna spray this here and it's just a rinse and repeat. We just have to be careful of our angles, making sure that we're doing the same thing that we were doing in our previous section. Okay, so we're here. I'm gonna keep her head somewhat straight. I'm gonna take that chunky monkey first section, like so. Gonna hold it to that fringe, but let go of it. Use it as a guide as where to start, but don't let it rule your world. Pushing that in, making sure it matches on both sides. Just like the other side, I'm gonna go back in because I can. I'm gonna take some out of the top and some out of that last little bottom. Again, if you feel like you wanna cut more anywhere on those ends, you have the opportunity shortly after. Taking again from the crown, before we go into our verticals, I'm not bringing it forward, remember? I'm taking a little bit from what we just did and I'm bringing the next section and I'm bringing them to the middle. And so we're cutting those directly and we're cutting down. And that's giving us the softness and look how cute this is. She can tuck it behind the ear if she wants to. She can wear it forward if she wants to, because you're really starting to see this kind of pieciness that we haven't seen from a long time. So we're getting some love for razor cuts. Woo woo. I feel the love too. I'm gonna dip her head down just a little bit. And like I said, now we're going into our verticals. Super easy, like basic stuff you learned, right? over the years, just mixing it up with a razor application. So if we've got balance here, we know that we've done a good job there. We can take the whole section and then we're gently cutting it backward into this direction. Same thing, gently cutting it backward. Don't worry about the little tails. Like I was saying, you're gonna love these suckers when you go in and sort of rough dry it and can really see how each of your client's hair is falling individually. Taking this away, bringing this in from a next vertical section or diagonal rather, sorry. Holding it out and just deliberately sliding. More slide than chop with this and just sort of letting the extra now I know that hair is gonna be wackadoodle, so let's just get rid of him today. And then we're gonna bring everything into it. Down and slide, down and slide. Now from this point, we can, we can pull back and forth and start to just get a little, because people love to kind of give it a little duck tail in the back when they have this kind of haircut. So I'm just gonna pull it from both sides and give just a little bit of a slide into it. Just a little bit of a slide into it. Now I've had some very happy accidents where there's some asymmetry going on and I'm feeling it a little bit in the back there. So again, as much as I want to, I'm gonna to wait to cut that very back portion of the hair. So now with the top, how do we deal with that? We're going to take the entire Pac-Man section here. And now all we need to do quite simply is to just connect it to our fringe. So we've got her here. Let me know if you think she's looking cute already. I sure think she's looking cute. And I'm gonna switch to scissors um, because I think it will just give a really kind of nice solid bouncy top to the cut. We've got all of our length here. That's what we want to match. So I'm going to comb everything forward first. Really helps me kind of reach it and bring it into the mix of the fringe. And I love some of these little long pieces too. So some will stay in this mix. Oh, it's already cute. Thank you. I think she's feeling pretty cute. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just grabbing sections from that crown ridge, just like half inch, one inch. Again, you don't want to do chunky sections all through the bottom and then really, really fine sections on top. She'll look like a light bulb. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to find my guide in there. And then from that point, we're just going to axis cut for shape and movement. And if you're wondering what, what the hell does he mean axis cut? These are sort of our, our classic cutting tools. We call it smart cutting method and they're available. You can find them. You can see them in our smart guide or if you ever come out to our style lab in Boston. And so you see here, you would think, wow, that's gonna be a big difference. Look how everything below the crown, I've got like minuscule little munchies I can take, welcome Krista, little pieces that I can take off of there and it's still blending perfectly. Like before, I'm not gonna change where I stand. I'm gonna bring the hair to me because that's the way it should work for this case to give me the length in the right places. Bringing it up bringing it straight up as I cut around, bringing it back and then checking for that magic. Do we get magic? Yes. Do we have one crazy hair? Yes. Who cares? Okay. Taking the next one. You can see I easily amuse myself by singing here in my home. Okay. What do you think? You think short hair's back? I'm kind of feeling it, especially this in-between shape. Are you hearing it from your clients? I'd love to hear your feedback. And blend it back. Look for crazy, I don't have any. And this is traveling too. You don't want it to be all stationary to the center because what's gonna happen is it's gonna be so long on top. You're just gonna have to go in and texturize the you know what out of that. So this is just a nice way of kind of blending it through, keeping texture throughout. And I'll lock it. Okay. She's looking so cute. I can't stand her anymore. Okay. And I'm just going to bring up one last little section there. Again, you're just kind of checking for weird hairs because razor, when you're just sort of sliding it very deliberately like that, it can leave you a couple little weird hairs. If her hair is thicker or coarser, you could certainly go through and sort of blend those ends. But sometimes you pick up a texture shear in hopes of creating more texture. And what you end up doing is really blending it out and taking away the, the unique characteristics of that. I might so Marisa just... says that everybody's chopping their hair off and most of them are doing razor cuts. And you know what? I bet you when all restrictions are lifted and we get closer to something of normal, everyone's going to want a new hairstyle completely. Right. And, I, and I'm also like, if your clients are like me as a client, I like literally have harassed my hairdressers like give me this, do this. I need to come in more often. Like I'm so afraid everything's going to close again. I used to go like a month for a haircut. Now I'm like, no kidding. Every 10 days, like I need in there. I had to cut my own hair for like six months. I never, ever, 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 ever want to do that again. So if I'm a professional and that's how I'm feeling, you can imagine how like jonesing your clients are for like your love and your attention and your creativity. So that's awesome to hear. I'm gonna cut the last few sections. I'm gonna reserve any texture until the very end. So I'm gonna repeat this process until it's done. And then I will pass it to my good friend and creative genius, Eddie Uker, who's gonna really be sharing his Latin America ladies uh, celebrity looks today, which I'm always so excited about and follow him at Eddie Uker, I believe it is, <laughs> unless it's some magical other name. Okay, this should be our last section. What a da, she's got her last section. Yeah, I'm singing songs, I don't know. Okay, pulling it all the way through. 
And again, just make sure you've got the magic in the back as well, right? That it's, you know, it's coming over. You've got a little bit of disconnection, which is welcome, but you don't want like, you know, something where she's like, so I tried to brush my hair and I don't know what the hell you did. Um, Cause that's never fun. So you can see there's a lot more length here. That's really going to be the hair that we can play with. That's what keeps it from looking sort of old school or out of fashion. And it really helps me to have a really updated, cool look. So I've built so much texture into this haircut. I doubt she'll need more texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add one of my favorite styling products ever. I'm going to add the five in one styling, which gives me smoothness and thickness and shine and texture and conditioning all in one product helps me to smooth out the ends while maintaining some volume at the roots. And that is the perfect solution. Think of this as like a CC cream or a BB cream for your head hair or your head. Um, and now I'm gonna take some moisturizing shine oil, which is brand new in our new texture um, curl uh, franchise. So we've got um, all kinds of wonderful products within this. So this is the moisturizing shine oil. If you have curly hair, if you have spiraled hair, if you have coily hair, this is going to be your baby. All right. So I'm going to start to blow dry and I don't want to just make a bunch of noise and so forth. So I'm going to hand dry and then I'm going to use like a vent style brush. Not a lot of stretching, not a lot of round brushing because this class is called textures really want to just bring out natural texture. So I'll do that. I'll mute myself. And those watching, make sure you pin Eddie so you can see all the magic he's going to create with waves today. Take it away, Eddie. Hey, guys. Well, what I want to share with you today, it's something that I, I found really, really nice for my Latin clients. They're always having the problem with uh, thick hair, thick hair uh, a lot of texture, and they are not loving the volume work. Right? They, are not, they are not like into getting that uh, volume on top. So I'm gonna share with you today a technique so we could create either smoothness, but we will also get a little bounciness. It's a mixing between uh, finger waves and uh, beach waves. So I'm going to show you, just give me a second. So we will see what's going on. Basically, I already did the whole head. I just leave a couple of parts out just to show you the technique. You need to bring block your head. It, it, the section needs to be, let's say, an inch or something. So we will have enough hair to play with it that we don't need to have that much because otherwise we're not gonna um, get the pattern that we are looking right now. The product of choice will be our heat styling protection, which is basically in spray. Uh, it's going to add a lot of shine. I call it shine and it's smoothness in a can. And basically what it does is going to give me this smoothness, this shine, but it will also protect my hair against heat tools. So I'm gonna get the product on top and underneath. Sometimes the first tool that we are using is our curling iron and we're gonna have nice bouncy curls, but right now I'm gonna show with you the technique with a flat iron. So this is going to be so repetitive. So I'm going to show you without hair, how, we're, how are we gonna be using our tool? First part, we're gonna grab the section. We're gonna hold it like next to, this, to the section that we have here we are going to create a wave, sort of like a, a bend. And then we are going to put it back, curl it a little bit, pull it down, uncurl it, and then we will continue with the pattern. Let me show you with hair now. For those who have like this um, ability to play with tools, I will recommend to start using the regular heat that you're using with your clients and also heat protector. But with, in the case that you need to practice, I will recommend not to use that much heat at the beginning. So basically we're gonna grab this section. We are going to pull this up a little bit 
just to get this pen. Then we are going to basically wrap it back and pull it down, unwrap it. We will continue with the wave again. Then we are going to curl it back again, pull it down. We will put it again back to our wave. And we're going to do it this till the bottom. And we're getting it's this C pattern, and we're going to give me shine, but it will go also give me some texture. What I'm looking right now is give a lot of movement texture, but not volume and not definition. So I'll go again, bend it a little bit. Then we are going to curl it back. Let's see. There you go. Pull it down, unwrap it. We will continue with the wave, unwrap it. And there you go. What we are getting right now, it's a lot of movement texture. We will have also a lot of control. I do have a lot of clients that they are looking at the movement for a beach wave, but they are totally afraid to get the texture just because they have a lot of hair. So using this technique, we're going to avoid volume, but we'll also control the texture. We need to have the texture that we will create, create instead of having um, some frizziness or something like that. So we're going to continue, continue using the same product, our heat protection, heat styling spray. We're gonna add on top, we are gonna add in the bottom. I love to play my fingers through the hair so we will make our product go through the whole head here evenly. And then we will do basically the same thing. We will grab a section, not that, not that thick, with a lot of control. If we have any tangle, we could just untangle really, really easy. And then we can continue with the shape. We are going to create the first wave. Then we are going to wrap it back. Pull it down a little bit, unwrap it. Then we'll, again with the bend, again with the wrap, again with the bend, again with the wrap. And the final part will be bend, wrap, bend, wrap. And I found this pretty helpful whenever I'm doing a photo shoot because it, it prepares my hair to any texture that I'm, that I'm looking forward. I can build something on top. And to get my final touch here, I'll go with one of my favorite products, which is Instant Defrizzer. It gives you a lot of frizz control up to 92% of the frizz. And I'll go forward, I'll start like playing on top of my head and I'm going to play like going to the front. So we will have this movement. If we have highlights, this is the right way to get this disconnection, the separation, but also a lot of movement stays in place. Some, someone who wants to have something fresh and modern, this undone look, this is something pretty current right now. People it's trying to get like more their natural texture instead of a salon look, but this is something that we could do to give them a lot of texture without getting a lot of work. And as you get the, the, uh, the technique, like going the first bend 
and then wrap the text there, the flat iron, and then unwrap it, and then continue with the band, and then wrap it, and unwrap it. This is going to help us to get this flat and twist look, which is basically something that we will do with our curling iron. But sometimes if we're doing it with a thick hair, it's going to give us a lot of freshness, a lot of volume. And um, this is the fresh modern look. And what I like about this one, it's even though I'm playing with it, you can see the pattern still there. And she could like flip the hair. This is something that I really like about. She could play to the other side. She could go in the back. And Michael Sean may make fun of about this, but I love to share my fan, fan, funness. That's what I call it. I love about my a favorite time Beyonce whenever she's performing, she's having the, this fan in front of her, and whenever she's moving, the hair goes like this. But at the end, the hair stays in place and has these beautiful, nice textures. So I'm totally in love about fans in front of me. I don't have hair, but I could imagine how how would I move get my hair. Get that fan, Beyonce. Me. Get that fan. <laughs> so. There you go, guys. This is my I texture with a flat iron. I hope you find this really, really helpful. Helpful. I love it. So I continue touching it just because you can see that I can keep my texture on place. And there you go. I love it. And here you can see I did sort of a speed blow dry here, folks, to kind of, I'm trying to show you a lot of different shapes all at once, but you can see the in-between keeps this, this line here. It can go more forward. It can go more backward. It can collapse. That's what I mean by it's in-between. It can look really short or she can kick it up and she can be like, I feel like being a little nutty today, right? And she can have more of a textured look. So this is one of those shapes that really will grow out as an in-between type shape. Now I've used a lot of our heat styling spray in between um, as I'm blow drying and onto the hair. What if you could have a hairspray that's a hold of one and protect you, so a hold between one and 10 and protect you from everything you wanna do to your hair? That is this spray. I'm obsessed with it because it's like, it gives me the shine without the trade-off of that greasiness or that clumpiness together. So I love just taking the spray all around my edges to give that finish. Cause it's like, we're inspired by some of the eighties, but girlfriend, we're not trying to like fully copy it. So it just lets me kind of detail things around. And I think it's so fun. It's so beautiful. And it's not just your clients who are like thirties and above, who are going to want these kind of shapes. This is really happening for the younger generation as well. And I think Marisha can uh, attest to that since everybody's coming into her salon and asking for these shapes. So that is look number one, the in-between short haircut. Um, finally, short hair is back. I've been waiting, seems like forever. All a client has ever wanted is what Eddie just showed you. Everybody wants to be JLo or everybody wants to be Beyonce. <laughs> so now what I'm gonna do is I wanna talk about our curl franchise because I know a lot of you tuned in because you're excited about the new products. I should have wore a lighter shirt for this. Um, you're excited about our new products. This is from our curl franchise. This is the elongator. Now my mannequin here, she had quite a bit of coily curly hair. She was somewhere between a, a 3B and a 3C. Certain areas, it looks like they permed it a little tighter and she was getting up to into the fours. And so what I wanted to use on her was I used the elongator. It's the curl elongator. It comes in a cream and I put this on wet hair and I'll admit I let her dry overnight and I used a lot of it. Like literally I used, I was taking like fingerfuls and going into the hair and then just giving it a little twist with my finger. Nothing too deliberate, but just giving it a little twist with my finger. So it has these in and outs, this little bit of confusion with the shape. Now that I have the curl shape, and this is great to do because often you cut curly hair and it's wet and it's kind of like, okay, I did it, hope it wins. I don't know, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But what I like to do is I really like to know, are you gonna wear a side part or a center part? Or do you want it short or do you want it long? And let's cut it as it lives. So I'm gonna take a comb, I affectionately call the big ass comb, and I'm gonna take out 
gently, right? I don't want to just ruin all the wave. I'm gently going to take out the crown section from recession to recession. And then I'm gently, emphasis gently, don't be adding me on social media saying it didn't work for me. I'm like, did you do it gently? Are you being gentle? I'm then gonna take a chopstick and I'm gently gonna hold that section in place. And also it don't be like super nervous, like, oh my God, not every hair got in that section. It's curly hair, right? So it's gonna forgive you for that. And when you use this curling technique, magically, it's not really magic, it's kind of more just mathematical science. Every section you cut, as opposed to a lot of curly cuts where they just go in and cut texture, cut texture, cut texture, and what do I say? Hope it wins. This isn't gonna do that because wherever I put that line, boom, I'm putting a line right there on her. Now let's go up by one perm rod. I can see her perm rod sections here. <laughs> We're gonna go up by one section there. Gently gonna twist her curls with the chopstick. If you wanna get cool short chopsticks like me, don't be a dum-dum and go to the store and say, I need small chopsticks, small chopsticks. They were like, you mean children's chopsticks? Oh yeah, children's chopsticks. I knew that. Okay, so sectioning out here. Now I can match this up. You can be asymmetrical. You can do whatever you want with this technique. And because of the tension and because of the disconnection, you will be able to find exactly where you cut that section the very next time you do her hair. So, I, I mean, I could even have that little wave of noodle in there. I'm gonna take it out because it bugs me, but I could have that. And the very next time she came in, I'd be able to put the wave of noodle back in her hair. Okay, keeping things very big and very compacted. That is our theme of the day. I'm gonna take this section, gently combing, not a lot because I wanna see the curl. I'm gonna hold my hand, palm up to the section. I'm then not going to give it a break with my fingertip or my Band-Aid nub. I'm then going to cut straight out from that section and that section is going to collapse. I'm gonna take the next section finger width, dip it up, and then cutting straight out. Don't move up, don't move down, just cut straight out. And now what you're gonna start to see, <laughs> the sure wore a light shirt, what you're really gonna start to see is this shape popping in there. Now, when I want to really remove some of the length, which I will, I can then do that at the end because I wanna see how the curl is reacting to what I'm doing right now. So get in there, get close. If you don't have a Frankenfinger like I do, you really can. Going in, and this is gonna be the shortest section with the curl. And you're like, oh my God, you just cut off all your curl. What's she gonna do? Calm down. Here's what comes next. I was about an inch from her scalp on the first section. So now with the next one, I'm gonna double that distance. I'm gonna be two or even three inches away from the scalp. So I'm gonna do that same motion, boop, 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 two to three inches. And now I'm saving more of the length and I'm cutting in an upward direction. What is cutting in an upward direction gonna do? It's gonna keep those long bits at the very end so she can have curly hair and she can also have a bit of a shapeless shape to go with it. Okay, oops, that was supposed to be cut with this. Act surprised. That was an extra little section there. Nothing to see here. Okay, same thing on this side, taking that section, following the guide, coming two to three inches off or follow your guide here now. And then I'm cutting in an upward direction. Remember, I'm using this big comb not to look silly, but actually so that <laughs> I'm not disrupting the curl too much. Is it gonna get disrupted? Yeah, a little. But she's also really gonna realize that you are paying attention to her curl. You're not just wet cutting it. You're not going through and just removing the ends because that's cute and that's nice for curly hair, but it's not always gonna reshape her completely. Same thing here. We know the length, we know the distance. Let's do it. Moving in an upward direction, why? Because I wanna preserve that last little bit of length. If I tell her I can give her some shape in this cut, well, darn it, I better do it. Same thing here, 
pushing that, pushing and picking as a work through, three inches off the head, cutting in an outward direction and simultaneously upward. So cute, like this is so fun. This is what she wants from a shape like this. I'll do this in two sections, holding it out three inches and then start cutting up, moving in that upward direction as always. Same thing, a few inches off, cutting in an upward direction. Okay, so see how we're getting all these kind of reverse V shapes, I like to call them. See how that texture is coming out? She doesn't just look like a broom anymore. She's got some shape. How cool is that? Remember what I promised you that she will be able to see where that section was. If she comes into a month or a year, I can find that section easily, even though it was wackadoodle from my mistake. But you can find the section again and again and again because these hairs are so short that they fall from the longer hairs underneath. So it's always going to give you that nice, clean, clear section. So now I can go in and I can use a technique called aircrafting, or we have a new one that we're doing like an aircraft surfing, where we're moving in a downward direction in an entire section of hair. And then we can go back in and move in an upward direction. So you're just nipping those last little curls off, still giving it a nice shape, but we can actually go shorter with those little underneath sections to just perk it up a little bit. And then last but not least, by the way, if curly hair has been sort of a nightmare for you, how quick does this happen as well, right? Like you kind of put her under the dryer or give her the diffuse in advance. And now we're allowing the elongator to really help us through this process. So what I like to do for this kind of shape, again, I apologize for the black shirt. What I like to do for this kind of shape is I like to leave it longer on the top because these are the bits that make her feel sexy. These are the bits that are giving the hair energy. And so I'll just grab hairs here and there and I'll aircraft for length. And I'll grab hairs here and there and I'll aircraft for length. And this is what you're seeing. If you watch any YouTubes on cutting curly hair, it feels like they just grab an end and they cut it. Well, now's our turn, we can do that. But we've already cut absolutely everything in the first um, two sections so now we get to play and have fun and just create little points of interest and take away any split ends, any dry ends, bub fi but we want to keep the length at the same time. Also, it's nice to hold some forward, give them a cut. Hold one sideways, give it a cut. Hold one backward, give it a cut. And then when that bounces out, you're getting this imperfection. Again, the word of the day the in-betweens as we're cutting the hair. So important, start with the elongator, get that shape going before you begin. And so, oops, so you can really follow that direction and follow the shape. I'm gonna keep playing with this technique. I know we need to stay right on time. So in our last few minutes, I'm gonna pass it to you, Eddie. Okay, guys. This is going to be something that we found really interesting on social media right now. This is like sort of like a really, really nice trend. This is inspired by Ariana Grande, which is someone who I like a lot about the hair styling that she's always wearing, this big, big ponytail. So I did this um, tight, slick back pony, which is really, really high. And the remaining part I did it like in a braid. I'm going to share with you the way that I am always adding hair extensions to make this really, really long. So I will start like in the bottom with um, my hair extensions. Like I, I would say the end of the, the, the braid and I, I'll start clip them in. So we will have, uh, we will start building our volume from bottom to the top. So we will clip this part. See, this will be so secure. And I will be using this technique of the way to place the hair extension is gonna give you this really, really long ponytail, which is something that is really, really nice. Right now, this is like uh, an XL 
um, ponytail. I will use this, um, section by section one of our, one of my favorite products too, which is called Dry Volume Blast. This is from our French full franchise, and what it does is going to give me a lot of space in between my hair. It's going to give me instant texture and volume. So I'm going to add the product before I start like um, opening this curl with this hair pick. I'm going to go on top, the bottom, and whenever I did this, I will go again with my dry volume blast and shake it a little bit just to fan it and open the hair. This is gonna be the bottom, and I will continue adding more hair extensions until I reach the top. This will be really, really easy to place in. You clip the hair extension to the braid, next to the braid, you wrap it really, really nice and tight, and you continue clipping. We're gonna add again, dry volume glass before we open this curls and with the hair pick, we're going to be pulling the hair down from the top, from the bottom. Let's think about a square. So we're gonna be top side, right side, left side, bottom. Plan it a little bit and let's add more dry volume rust. And it will work so, so nice. Let's see, I'll add two more hair extensions. So we continue to clip them in. And the reason, why, the reason why I'm braiding is because sometimes we are leaving our hair underneath the hair extensions that we're placing in and it, turns into a nightmare just because it's gonna be falling down, it's gonna be showing. And as you can see, I'm using a different color. So we need to make this blend match. So I'm going to grab my hair. Like I, like I said before, it needs to be sort of like a square. I need to do it like on top, underneath, left, and right. I'm jazzing and mine up here, Eddie. Her face was scaring me. It's a very scary <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't know what's going on with her, but now, now she's looking more Parisian, I think. So I wrap this up. And this is a trick really, really nice for those who wants to make the, the hair extension looks really, really long. This is a 20 inch hair extensions, but it looks like 30 inches at the end. So that's the reason why I like to go wrapping all around my ponytail. So I'll make this big and bouncy. Try to secure the hair extensions underneath, grab it like really secure so you can play with the texture. You can pull this out. There you go. And I'm going to wrap this part just to cover my hair extensions in the base, and we are done. I tied it so tight around her neck. <laughs> I love that, Eddie, and I think that's clearly that's what a lot of celebrities, including your girl Ariana, are doing, right, to get that thickness in their hair. Sometimes they don't have like that much hair. I mean, they have like 
not that much. <laughs> so they are always using her extensions or something. They, I found that there's a lot of ways to add in her extension sometimes for us to doing, let's say, a photo shoot or um, hair show. We're looking to have a lot of volume and a lot of texture, but we don't have that much hair. Yeah. Mannequins need ears. <laughs> there you go. Maybe on top of her head. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. She's a very chic woman now. She, you know, this is fresh, this is fun. It's reminiscent of the 80s for me, but it's just such a cool, chic look with curly hair that she can roll out of bed and look amazing. For my girl, I think she has a lot of hair right now. At the beginning, she had this small, tiny ponytail, and right now she's wearing these beautiful bangs that I did for her. So it looks like a, like a really, really nice and modern, but also it's a little bit nice. So this is something that it's really on trend right now, these really high ponies. So if you want to secure your ponytail and make it a little bit tighter here, try to add more bobby pins or hair pins pointing up. So you will keep the yeah, but this hardness here. Also, speaking of the short, did everybody see J Lo's cover for what was it? Was um, was it Cosmo or um, Vogue? Was it Vogue or Bizarre? Vogue. Of course, it's Vogue. But her cut's very similar to this as well. They just went for it and wet looked the whole thing. Is that a wig you think, Eddie? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think she allows to cut her the hair like that, like that much. I can't imagine it, but you never know. All right. So in the chat box, I put the link if um, our guests would like to register to get access to our digital library. Inside of our digital library, we have cutting courses, styling courses, and lots of product information. So click on that link, register yourself to get access to our library. We'd love to have you. I love how fast that is too, Eddie. Yeah, I think this is really, really nice when you need to transform the hair look to, into something different. And she looks nice with this tons of hair. And a lot of you may think of Living Proof as the science product, as the, you know, the number one prestige brand in the United States and really becoming that way all over the globe. But don't forget, these were created by some of the most intense editorial hairdresser hands, doing covers of every magazine around the world. That's why I can do things like just spray at point blank range and be creative and touch. Hairdresser hands are in every single thing. So don't let our popularity fool you. Um, it's really been designed for the expert hairdresser and for the hairdressers working at the most intense level, be it through celebrity hair or just really, you know, editorial where you have to be able to change it up and so forth. So your clients already love the brand. They will buy it if you ask them to. It's just you developing your creativity through the brand 
and knowing that you don't have to deal with the trade-offs of silicone anymore, weighing the hair down, making the hair dirty, or flattening your styles. So I'm looking forward to all playing with this. I cut a lot of hair today. I'm about to fall on all of it. <laughs> I love it. The, the short haircut, I'm dying for it. It was really easy. And I think this is something that we are looking for right now. Something that it's like saving time. Time is money. Whenever we can do something like faster, I think it's going to be better for us. So I love it. Are you calling me easy? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm no, I'm kidding. Every, everything I do is I prefer to take the techniques, to take the smart methods and get into, like you're spending your day off today. Hey, I see someone's face. You're spending your day off today with us and we appreciate that. That is where your time is going. Learning these techniques, learning the tension, learning the sectioning. So you can always be successful with that. Are there any questions as Eddie's finishing up that look? We have some friends who have joined us now, which is awesome. So I put in the chat box, the link to um, the ISSC digital experience show. So if you guys like what you see, um, our team, including Michael, Sean, and Eddie, will be doing three days worth of live education with a program called Textures. Did you give them my discount? MSC? I will. <laughs> so as a gift, we're going to give you a discount code. <laughs> I'm also the host of Creative Conversations um, for PBA, for Naha, interviewing like all the nominees and like each category, not all the nominees. I, I would need three years to interview everybody. Um, but yesterday live on Facebook, I gave everybody my discount code. <laughs> <laughs> so use it five bucks off there's like 80 artists 80 presentations you're gonna get for like 20 bucks with my discount so you can't miss it. are you done eddie oh yeah Oh, sorry, I wasn't looking at you. Okay, so <laughs> wait for me to <laughs> wait for me to like stop leading the class. I apologize, folks. So that is, I'm just going to recap what I did for those of you who just joined us. Make sure you rewatch it. I know you're all bought tickets to this. Sorry if you missed any part of it. This is a haircut I'm calling the in between. You've seen similar on JLo for the cover of Vogue this month. Um, looks good in a wet cut or in a wet look, looks good in a dry look all the way around the head. You're getting lots of multitudes of textures. I've literally pushed this shape into a hundred different things, even as we've just sat here today. And that's what I love about the in-between is she's getting a short haircut. It's not as short as a picky, pixie, picky, new word. Um, the, the emphasis, the trend is much shorter on the center of the fringe. Think in-between center there. Um, simple to do, mostly razor cut, axis cutting through the crown based on a Pac-Man section. Make sure you check it out. I'll also be doing a tutorial on this real soon at hashtag MSCTV on YouTube. And then this is a three section. We cut section one in the nape. Um, so basically the ear base to the ear base. Then we went with a middle section or the main living area of the hair. And the whole thing is just, you double the distance as you work up and then you freestyle the entire thing. She dried overnight in the elongator. You could diffuse or add, put this on your client before you curl cut her. I really suggest you do it, work with her curl, don't work against her curl and certainly don't work on the hair overly wet because that stretches it and changes the shape. Eddie, I know, you, did you wanna wrap up what you taught today real quick? Yes, um, my first um, mannequin was, I used um, a flat iron technique to create this texture. We're looking for something modern, fresh, but this is also for someone who has a lot of hair. We're looking for have smoothness and slickness, but also have a little bit of movement, like maybe some highlights on it or a balayage maybe, so we could play with the texture, it will show and pop up the color. Uh, it was basically 
uh, get creating a bend at the beginning, then wrapping the the flat iron, pulling it down, then unwrapping it and creating another another bend, and we'll continue with this pattern until the end. And what it gives me, it's sort of like separation and Britney Spears look whenever she's wearing her extensions. Uh, this is gonna be with a lot of movement, and that's what I like about this one. It gives me a lot of separation for photo shoots and something. This, this is one of my favorite looks right now. This is something that you can see on everyone by now and do on do. And for this one, I did um, uh, Ariana Grande's Inspire. Basically, I had this uh, really, really small piece of hair at the end. I braided it because this is a really short mannequin. So what I did was actually adding her extensions from the bottom to the top using our dry volume glass, which is gonna give me a lot of volume and, and texture. And that's what I like about it. We're, I think that's something that it's really in right now is texture. So that's, what, that's why we love to share the way that we're creating textures with you guys, because I think flat hair is a, a bit boring. So let's play with it, let's make it fun, and that's, uh, why we add a bunch of her extensions. I use different colors. So the way that I place her extensions give me this XL ponytail and uh, with this beautiful chubby bangs. So I think that this is my wrap for the looks today. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I know we went a few minutes over. Thank you, especially to uh, Marisha for being right right on the button and joining us. She almost had an exclusive class for a minute there. Thank you to everyone else who joined in, whomever iPad is and Rachel, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Remember these are available at later days too. If you missed anything, not at the Church of Later Days, I mean just later days, you can go in there, you get what I mean. I am Michael Sean Corby. I'm the Global Creative Director for Living Proof. It is my passion and my honor always to share with you the trends, but in usable formats and fashions that you can replicate behind the chair to make some money. I know we're all excited to be back in the working world. I know we're so ready to just get back to full speed ahead, having little tricks like this, having new cuts and shapes and textures. Thank you, Eddie, so much for those textures, bringing us those from your fashion capital in Guatemala City. Thank you so much to Colleen, who is our global senior director of education. She is handling education all around the globe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being our DJ today. If we have no further questions, I will let you have the rest of your day back. Thank you, Krista. No further questions? All right, guys, I'm Michael Sean Corby. So glad to be with you here. And remember at Living Proof, we are the science and you are the living proof. So get out there and live it every day. We'll see you soon. We'll see you next time. Bye, Eddie. Bye, Colleen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.